folks, can I call the meeting to order and welcome everybody to the uh, Liverpool City Region Combined Authority meeting today. Um, before moving into the detail of the meeting, there are just a couple of housekeeping points as usual I need to just remind people of. First of all, can I remind everyone that all mobile phones should be turned into silent for the duration of the meeting? And to ensure that everybody in the chamber can hear the debate, can I please ask that members and those presenting the report use the microphones and speak into them, please. Uh, they work best when they're close to you. And as ever, the meeting today has been filmed by officers from the Combined Authority and will be available on the Notice of the Council YouTube channel later today. I, I'd just like to say in, uh, also to a big welcome to some young people at the back who I think are shadowing various chief execs today. Um, I think is it Margaret and David you, you, the, from your authority. So very, very welcome, a warm welcome to you. Hope you en enjoyed the meeting. Great to have you here. Right, okay. Um, so item one is apologies. Have we any apologies for items, Chair, we have apologies from Councillor Moran of West Lancashire, the Council of the Okay, one of those apologies. Um, item two, declarations of interest. Have any declarations of interest been received? Item three, minutes of the, the last meeting of the combined authority held on the 16th of October. We've got those minutes in our, uh, our, in our packs today, um, pages one to eight of the agenda pack. Can I ask, are these approved as a correct record of the meeting? So agreed. <clears throat> okay. Um, so that takes us then to the, the main item on today's agenda, uh, item four, the potential devolution of powers and funding to Liverpool City Region, pages nine to 40 of the main report pack, um, and pages one to 36 of the supplementary pack. Um, can, I, can I just say, uh, this is a momentous day. It's got a time <coughs> over this is a momentous day for the City Region, but I genuinely think it, it, it is. Um, all six councils last night endorsed the Liverpool City Region deal. Um, it is a fantastic, I think, achievement after many, many months of, uh, um, of intense and detailed negotiations. Uh, can I just take this opportunity of thanking all my fellow leaders um, for uh, you know, the uh, sterling work that I think we've all done collectively to get this deal across the line. And I, can I say, it's always invidious to pick people out, but can I say a particular um, thank you to Jeff Fitzgerald and, and David Parr, who've uh, particularly led negotiations, but all the chief executives actually have done a, uh, a brilliant job in um, supporting us to, to get the deal, um, uh, as I say, across, across the line. Um, I'm just going to do, with your indulgence, a very brief <coughs> presentation on what's in the deal, um, and then I'll invite leaders um, and, and any other members to, to make a comment I think might be just worth refreshing everyone's memories, what we've, what we've agreed. So, I think I'll, I'll go over here. Okay. Um, so, just very, very briefly, I'm not going to take much time to go through this, so forgive me if I, if I whiz through the slides um, pretty quickly. So, in terms of... Um, the, the approach. Clearly we all know we went through a, a pretty intensive sort of four or five months of, of negotiations um, around our devolution, devolution asks. We've said from day one that the, uh, the prize of a, of a really good uh, devolution uh, settlement is worth the price of the change in governments and that I think we've all signed up to the principle that decisions made in the city region by uh, representatives of our electorate are infinitely better than decisions made by ministers and civil servants in Whitehall. Um, and equally important that um, this was about devolving powers from Whitehall to the city region, not about sucking things up from individual local authorities. Okay, thank you. So the journey, again, you'll know all of this, so I won't spend much time. Um, it all kicked off in July when the Chancellor announced his intent
intention to do these deals. We submitted our um, detailed list of asks in the, for the comprehensive spending review uh, on the 4th of September. We've had these detailed negotiations and we've met those key ministers, uh, the leaders met those key ministers at key points in the, uh, in the, in the journey. Okay? So the deal, um, we were clearly, we were asked to kind of prioritize our uh, list of asks, and those were the kind of four headings that we focused on, economic development, transport, housing and planning, and employment skills, and I'm briefly just going to go through each one of them. So economic development, um, I think the big, the big uh, achievement from this deal is this very substantial signal investment fund, 30 million pounds a year over 30 years, a 900 million pound fund, which we can use to lever in additional monies you know, for, the, for growth projects. I think that will be a fantastic resource for us to um, uh, develop over the years, uh, but we need to make sure we've got, uh, I know we have a pipeline of really good projects. The International Festival of Business, that was a, a, a remarkable success last year. We've got that for a further, uh, we've got it again obviously in 2016, we've got it for a further two years in 2018 and 2020. And also greater control of the um, European funding, uh, ERDF, ESF, to, for us to be able to determine um, the priorities and the projects around that I think is a, is a move forward because that at the moment is controlled nationally by DCLG. So that was a, a, a real gain. <clears throat> In terms of other things under the economic development heading, uh, we, we've had devolved to us greater um, uh, responsibility for uh, business support and the functions of UKTI. Um, a, a really important uh, set of powers around continuing the kind of free port status of the, of the port. Um, uh, I think in terms of attracting investment and trade through the port, that will be invaluable. And also recognising the river as a, as a hugely important potential resource and looking at the, the uh, opportunity to, to develop a tidal power scheme to generate electricity for businesses and consumers. Uh, I think that's a really exciting project. And uh, lastly, the um, commitment to work with us, the government have made, to make sure that National Museums Liverpool is put on a more sustainable and viable business footing going forward. In terms of transport, um, responsibility for a multi-year local transport settlement um, is, is an important move forward. The special rail grant to renew our rolling stock is a key priority for the city region. Uh, we will have um, state-of-the-art uh, rolling stock now and the, the ability to uh, have, have that funding guaranteed over a much longer period than we, we, we would have otherwise have got, I think, is an important uh, uh, gain. Um, the, the powers to refranchise bus services to give the ability for us at the city region to decide on things like fare levels and routes is, is, is really important to, and also that to be part of the an integrated ticketing regime and um, speaking as leader of world this is a particularly important one for me uh, more freedom and flexibility around the, the legislation around funding of the, the tunnels and potentially uh, the freedom to reduce tunnel tolls is, is, is an important uh, move forward on housing and planning um, uh, powers to, to have a single statutory city region framework around priorities for employment and housing sites. Uh, the idea of uh, mayoral development corporation and mayoral development zones to give us more powers around uh, CPOs and other, uh, other things like that I think will be important in terms of uh, maximising the opportunity of strategic sites throughout the city region. A land commission to give us more say in how um, assets owned by for example, the former regional development agency, uh, that's an important power. And also a commitment to explore the potential for uh, devolution of responsibility and funding for housing going forward because we know we've got some huge challenges around that uh, area. On skills and employment, um, full devolution of the adult skills budget by 2018, a um, commitment to work collaboratively on careers advice City Reason to chair the upcoming post-16 review um, uh, is an important move forward. 
uh, code designing and code commissioning employment programs going forward with DWP, and also to look at an innovative pilot around taking a household approach to getting people back into the labour market, and working with government generally on improving uh, standards of education, and particularly emphasis on making sure we raise our offer on vocational education. So, I've run through that very quickly, but obviously the other important area in the deal is governance, so we will have a directly elected city region mayor um, in, in May 2017, but around that some key principles, uh, clearly the legislation is still going through the House, uh, House of Commons, um, but some, some important uh, elements of the, the model will be delegation um, arrangements to uh, the mayor and uh, particularly the cabinet that will um, uh, be established, checks and balances, the mayor will be required to consult with um, cabinet and uh, it, the, the, there will be an ability to ask the mayor to, uh, uh, to, to look again at the policies and budgets if two thirds um, uh, uh, decide to uh, reject, but hopefully that won't be needed. Uh, and I think uh, a, a recognition, once again, as I said at the beginning, that local authority, individual local authorities will still maintain their sovereignty and their integrity over all of the functions and the, the responsibilities we currently perform. And an important role for scrutiny as well, um, uh, once the, the new government's arrangements are set up. Clearly a lot of details still to be fleshed out, but I think the principles are, um, are, are well, well established and will um, give us a good platform going forward. So finally, ne next steps. As I, as I just said, we need to um, flesh out the arrangements around governments. There's a big, uh, I believe there's a big job to be, doing, to be done in terms of identifying the capacity for us to deliver all of this. Um, and work is, I know, in hand to do that. Um, and, and also around the, the, just the implementation of the deal, because clearly having got Having fought hard to get these powers and responsibilities, the, the absolute onus now is on, on us to deliver. That is a key priority. Mm -hmm. and, and also, almost as soon as the ink is dry on this deal, we're going to get into phase two negotiations. The government has made it clear that they welcome uh, proposals for further powers and responsibilities to be devolved to the city region. And uh, um, I'm sure we will be uh, taking advantage of that opportunity, so we will uh, as leaders be um, entering into those phase two negotiations um, very, very soon now. And as I said, finally, the city region mayor election um, is scheduled for May 2017. So um, th those are the, the main elements of the deal. I've, I've really kind of gone through that very quickly, but you've got the, the actual detailed document in, in front of you. As I say, I'm, I'm hugely proud of uh, where we've got to. Um, a lot of work still to be done, but I think we, we have worked really well as a group of leaders, a group of officers, and uh, you know, I'm really looking forward to the, uh, uh, making sure that we can deliver. Because at the end of the day, this is about how, how we can grow our economy to benefit our local residents. So that's all I wanted to say, and now I'm, I'll open it up to other leaders to, to make any comments. Joe. I, I just want that um, it's good that the uh, we've got some young people being from the regions group because it's about their future. That's what uh, this team is all about. It's about the potential of the future of the whole city region. I just want to uh, emphasise the point around the, the funding here. Um, it, it is uh, a 900 million uh, pound game share uh, pot that we will have uh, over the 30 year period, 30 million pound. It is. Uh, if you look at the single pot, it, it's totally around right about one and a half billion pounds. Together with the European Intermediate Fund, it's a, a package of around three billion pounds, which is going to be hugely uh, important for us to drive our economy and drive growth within the city. You know, it's only a few months ago uh, that we were actually uh, taking government to court to uh, try to win back control of our European Union. Here we have it. And let's also be clear, we only uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, then the media told us that this deal was dead and we, we weren't going to have one. So congratulations to, uh, to you, to the, my fellow leaders, and to all the officers that have been working really hard on this to make sure that we happen. And we should be absolutely proud of that fact. Not only because what it will enable us to do, 
But if we look at this in its context about uh, democracy, when you are elected as an MP, uh, as a Tory, for instance, in a southern borough, you can be selected by another Tory MP in a southern borough and be given the job as a minister to manage and control this city region. That's what happens in the democracy within this country now. A minister who hasn't seen Liverpool city region can decide how that money is spent. We have an opportunity to take control of our own destiny, to unite with a united purpose and a united vision, and take control away from Whitehall and Whitehall ministers so that we actually control and shape our future. And for me, that's why this deal is important. And that's why, as far as I'm concerned, all the councils agreed this last night. And let's uh, you know, just hope and, you know, that the combined authority is going to the Robert. Thank you, Chair. This is a very proud moment in indeed the city region. Um, and I would just first of all like to express my personal appreciation and that's on behalf of the Pleasant uh, Price Partnership and the private sector and city region generally. This is pivotal, it's momentous as you, as you say. It will influence will be felt for decades and to have achieved this I think is quite extraordinary. And just briefly, back in August, this was left with us to deal with. And it was an enormous challenge. Um, the, the themes were, were really substantial. And what you described there, Phil, is not just a common uh, response. This is a tailored response, looking particularly at the needs of the city region, both in terms of the, the river, in terms of energy, in terms of skills, in terms of transport. It's been thought through carefully, individually, and precisely. And that's where the time has been spent and so well spent. So my thanks, my personal thanks, uh, on behalf of all the bodies I represent, uh, to you and to the leaders and the mayor, and especially for those who have been working as officials in this very complex exercise to bring it to this great, great conclusion. conclusion. I, I think also that uh, it's, it's worth saying that what we're doing now is to bring this board to May 2017. That's in line with Manchester. We have caught up time there now, so we're right on target to make this happen, the first opportunity. I think that's very important to say. And thirdly, it isn't just what we're doing substantively here within the city region. The external perception of having got this deal together collaboratively is so vital suddenly people realise not only are we creating the region economically, but we're working together. It always has been in doubt. It's now beyond doubt. It's here to see, to witness. And this is the foundation, the result of those here today. And the officials and people could be working behind it all. And I'll just give you one other instance finally of a, of a consequential benefit, and that relates to the galvanisation of the private sector. And, and it's touched upon it page 3, paragraph 4.3 of the report, because this led, uh, as, as I hoped it might, and it certainly has, to 12 private sector bodies coming together, 150,000 employees, 10,000 uh, companies uh, coming together with a single voice, putting forward their proposals for their views on what this might contain. They weren't all accepted, nor should they be. The point is they did it, they came together with a single voice and you listen and you incorporate the appropriate parts of that into this document. I think that's tremendous in so many different ways. So finally, a great, great result. This is epoch making. We all look forward to this long journey evolving. This is a start. Implementation delivery must now follow. But my thanks and very well done to you all. Thank you. Robert, can I, can I just say a big thank you to you, because I know um, bringing all those different private sector voices together was not an easy task, and I think you, know, um, you, you deserve great credit and thanks from us to have uh, get, got 12 organisations to uh, speak with one voice, so thank you to you personally for your efforts. Okay, other, other comments? Anyone else? Anything else? No? Okay, so can I just ask you, to turn to the recommendations in the in the report, um, the 
that they're in front of you, paragraph 2.1. Um, can we agree those recommendations and endorse this agreement? Is that agreed? Thank you very much. Great. Okay, so that takes us to the uh, final item this morning, um, the, an appointment to the combined authority. And Angela, you're, you're going to speak to this, please. So it just remains for me to, to thank you for your attendance, contribution to this meeting, and to remind you that the next scheduled meeting of the Combined Authority will be at 11 o'clock on Friday the 18th of December. So thank you for your attendance, and I declare the meeting closed. Thank you.